Hello, my name is Yifei Chen, and I'm currently an undergraduate student at Swarthmore College. Today, I would like to introduce Semantic Adapt, an optimization-based approach to adapting mixed reality layouts to different environments that leverages virtual physical semantic connections. This work was done at the Pervasive Interaction Lab at Tsinghua University in collaboration with Yu Kang Yan, Xin Yi, Yuan Chen Shi, and last but not least, David Lindabara at the Human Computer Interaction Institute at Carnegie Mellon. Mixed reality allows us to flexibly embed digital information within the real world. The ability to freely arrange virtual elements in space can enable personalized digital spaces beyond what is currently possible with computers. As motivation for our work, let us consider the following sample scenario. A researcher is currently surveying papers in their room wearing a mixed reality headset. They've arranged their applications in a way that integrates well into the physical environment. Moving to a different environment, however, may break this layout. The researcher then has to manually rearrange everything. This process is time consuming and tedious, particularly considering that this adaptation has to occur every time the researcher moves somewhere new. So what we're arguing here is that for any mixed reality interface to be truly useful, it must be able to automatically adapt the changes to a user's environment. To begin with, I just wanted to demonstrate the possibilities of a system that can automatically adapt layouts between environments. We used an optimization-based approach that specifically takes into consideration semantic connections between virtual elements and the physical world. Imagine again a researcher working in one room shifting to another. Our approach can gracefully retarget their setup to their new space. Here's one example of semantic connection. A music application is placed in close proximity to a pair of headphones since they both share semantic associations with sound. Here we see another use case where a mixed reality layout suitable for travel planning is adapted from a dining room setting to a kitchen. Again, semantic associations are reflected spatially with the food related items placed in close proximity to a snack container. Our approach builds on related work for mainly two streams of research. Firstly, there is substantial power of work leveraging a variety of information to determine the ideal display of mixed reality interfaces. We distinguish our work with our specific focus on semantic connections. We also draw heavily from known techniques and optimization-based user interface design for the implementation of our approach. To begin with, we conducted a formative study. We aim to characterize firstly user considerations for adaptive mixed reality. We therefore asked 12 participants to manually design and adapt mixed reality layouts given a scenario, a set of virtual elements, and an environment. We tested two scenarios, one that was productivity oriented and one that had more of a leisure focus. We tested two environments for each scenario and tailored two sets of virtual elements. From our results, we derived a set of six requirements for adaptive mixed reality interfaces. First, Semantic associations between physical objects and virtual elements should be reflected spatially in the layout. We observed in the study two behaviors that informed the design of our approach. Participants firstly anchored interface elements to objects with shared semantic associations. Here we see an example of a participant anchoring a shopping application for kitchen utensils to a cup. Participants also avoided certain semantic associations. As you can see here, a participant intentionally avoided people with their placements. Secondly, generally speaking, higher utility elements should be assigned to more accessible positions. Third, the characteristics and usage requirements of each element should be respected. For example, if a element is in need of touch interaction. Fourth, users tended to prefer structuring the arrangement of virtual elements in either rows or columns. Fifth, there should be some level of consistency maintained between the current environment layout and the adapted layout for the new environment. Lastly, occlusions between elements should generally be avoided. And so we introduce semantic adapt. Our approach takes as input firstly a set of virtual elements. For each element, we define a set of related semantic associations and a set of semantic associations to avoid. We also define a utility value and a set of interaction requirements. All these values are currently specified manually by content creators. They, they can also imaginably be computed in a data-driven manner. 
Secondly, we take the input parameters describing the input and target environments. For each environment, we label the objects it contains and a set of volumes and planes which could potentially act as containers for our virtual objects. These volumes and planes are automatically voxelized based on the dimensions of our virtual elements. We then formulate the task as an assignment problem where the goal is to assign each virtual element to a container voxel that best suits its needs. We formulate an objective function that contains each of the derived requirements as a sub-objective. Our sub-objectives include semantic agreement between the virtual setup and the physical environment, overall layout utility, satisfaction of interaction requirements, overall layout structure, layout spatial temporal consistency, and lastly, visibility. With this talk, I will just focus on the design of the semantic agreement term. So given a virtual element and a labeled object, we basically compute two values. Firstly, the extent to which the element should be anchored to or placed nearby that object. And secondly, the extent to which that element should avoid or be placed far away from that object. To determine whether an object should be anchored or should avoid a given object, we basically want to figure out how similar that element's semantic associations are to the object's semantic associations. If the element's related semantic associations are very similar to that of the objects, it should be anchored to that object. We follow a very similar procedure for computing the avoidance behavior. To calculate similarity, we use the path similarity metric from WordNet, which corresponds to the length of the shortest path between their syn sets according to WordNet's ISA hypernym hyponym taxonomy. We use these two variables to represent the anchoring and avoidance behaviors. At last, we define the sub-objective as follows. So the first part rewards the placement of elements in containers next to objects that share the elements semantic associations. The second part punishes the placement of elements in containers next to objects with semantic associations that the element was set to avoid. Please see our paper for a more detailed breakdown of this objective. Our prototype is built in Unity. We use Groby, uh, the Groby solver for our optimization procedure. And we use the NLTK WordNet interface for path similarity calculations. For evaluating our approach, we employed scanned environments presented within a VR environment that were manually labeled for their physical objects and containers. And this leads us to our evaluation. For evaluation, we invited 12 participants to compare our model with a baseline adaptation approach that automatically scaled layouts to new environments without considering our sub-objectives. We presented participants with automatically adapted layouts using both approaches and asked them to evaluate and adjust the results to their satisfaction. We recorded the number of manual adjustments as a measure of the quality of the adaptation results, and we also collected the participant feedback in terms of a think aloud protocol and a questionnaire. Semantic Adapt reduced the number of manual interactions uh, for adjusting the layouts by 33% compared to the baseline, and participants perceived the layouts generated by the approach as more suitable for the environment and reported a higher willingness to adopt the proposed approach. Our approach is, of course, not without limitations. While our evaluation generally indicates that semantic associations merit consideration, participants also pointed out several contexts where its importance is compromised. For example, when the task doesn't um, really depend on the environment. Future work exploring how this consideration can be weighted contextually amongst other factors of adaptation may reveal interesting insights and provide a solution. In our current implementation, we also require several input variables to be manually extracted. Uh, specifically related to the environment, future versions of our approach uh, can be complemented with techniques that extract this information automatically. Now to wrap up, we contribute an optimization-based mixed reality adaptation algorithm that leverages semantic connections between virtual interface elements and physical objects. Our approach was informed by a user study, and an evaluation revealed that our approach um, increased the need for manual adaptations and was preferred by users. And to conclude, the core con message that I hope to convey with this talk was that semantic connections between virtual elements and physical objects mere consideration in adapting mixed reality layouts to different environments. Please see our paper for details and discussion.
Thank you for watching.